Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is my weekly video blog. This time around, I'll be talking about a file saving problem that some people with older versions of Photoshop Elements occasionally have. We'll be looking at an alternative tool to use to replace the Elements Organizer if you're not happy with that particular file organization tool. And we'll also be looking at the new update for Elements Plus. Okay, let's roll the opening credits and get to it. The first thing I want to talk about here is something which I keep on seeing popping up in the standard searches on YouTube, something which I haven't had a problem in in years, but I occasionally hit this thing back when I was using Photoshop Elements 12 and earlier. Sometimes if you wanted to save it to a JPEG, it wouldn't let you save to a JPEG. Now there are two ways of doing a save for JPEG. The first one is the more standard, and that's just going up here to File, come down to Save As, and then choosing JPEG for the list. And right here is where the problem was happening for people if they had earlier versions of Photoshop Elements. This would often be grayed out, and all I could do is be to save in the default Photoshop format. Now, what was causing that was that the Photoshop format, of course, has layers in it. If your file has layers, let me just close this out of the way. There we go. If your file has layers like this one, then it wouldn't be able to save directly to JPEG using that Save As tool. Now, the way around that would be to collapse your layers. I never like doing that. And there's a better solution anyway in this using the Save for Web tool. A lot of people who are brand new to using Photoshop Elements and have used other editors don't know about the Save for Web. It's right here, right below the Save As. It's pretty easy to see. It's just sitting right there, of course. But this allows you to convert a regular file into a web file with a lot more options. It's actually the best way to save out for a web-based format. Let's just bring this up. There's the Save for Web. Notice we have two windows showing in here, a left view and a right view. This is our preview views. The right view shows you the result. Left view is the original. So you can compare back and forth. The important part about this, though, is that you can save to all kinds of different formats and different settings. For instance, JPEG high, low, or medium settings. Your PNG 24 and PNG 8. Different formats are better for different uses. Most people save most images to the JPEG format. I have a whole section about this in my regular training. I'm not going to be getting into that here. I wanted to mention that this is how you get around that problem if you're using an older version of Photoshop Elements, you know, 13 or 12 or earlier, sometimes you might hit that problem where the JPEG is grayed out in the Save As dialog box. If that's the case, just use the Save for Web. It's much better. Choose your file format up here, set any settings, and then choose Save. It'll ask for a file save location, and there you go. Let's now move on to something a bit more interesting, and that is the new features in the latest version of Elements Plus. Just switch over here to Effects and you'll see that in the drop-down. So if you have it already installed, it'll be on your drop-down right here. Now if you have Elements Plus installed, like I have here, then you should automatically get the update to it. They'll, you'll get an email about that and you've got a download link to download the update for it. So the update doesn't cost anything. If you don't have Elements Plus yet, it's one of my favorite plugins for working here with Photoshop Elements. It's a great plugin. But if you do have it, there are some great new tools in here. I'll be doing a couple of videos about these tools later on. You have full video reviews of these tools. So I'll just kind of briefly glance at them here. We'll be looking at these in much greater detail a little later on. The first new option here has to do with tracking. Go up to File, New, Blank File, make a new file here. Okay, let's just grab some text. Make sure my color here is black. There we go. And I'll just type in tracking on this. You can see on this word here, the space is a bit large right there between the A and the C. Now previously, inside of Elements Plus, you could use tracking over here. And you could adjust the, the tracking right here for the whole line. So I could make the whole line wider or you know tighter or looser if I wanted to use in the tracking. But it adjusts the whole line. And normally that's not what I need. Normally I need to be able to actually bring individual letters closer. This is actually one of the new features in Photoshop 
Elements 2019, the only feature that I like on the new version is the addition of tracking. And over in 2019, you can actually adjust the spacing between individual letters. You couldn't do that previously here in Elements Plus, but with the latest update, the version 11 update, you now can do that. Also, this version 11 update works for earlier versions of the Elements Plus. And we'll take a look at the versions it works with here in just a moment, but it works with earlier versions as well. So the new thing here is Fragment. And this is the exciting part. Fragment allows you to adjust tracking between letters or groups of letters without doing the whole line like the old layer tracking did. Just come down here. I'm just going to select just the A and the C. There we go. And I'm going to bring this to the left a little bit. And you see in our preview up there, I've actually now squeezed the A and C a little closer together without affecting anything else. So Elements Plus now allows you with this fragment section in here to actually adjust the tracking or the kerning between individual sets of letters or groups of letters, you know, fragments of your whole line instead of just the whole line. So now this is a great tool and for 12 bucks, which is the cost for Elements Plus, as opposed to Photoshop 2019, obviously it's a much better deal. And this is the only thing really about 2019 that I like. So you don't have to go and upgrade to 2019 if you don't want to. Just make sure you have Elements Plus, your current version of Elements Plus, and you then have this nice little adjustment tool. It also can adjust the height, width, baseline, subscript, superscript, capital adjustments, all caps, small caps. So lots of additional adjustments in here on fragments of your text as well. So this now is a complete tool for doing a lot of work in here, but especially the tracking that has complete tracking, not just for the whole line, but for individual fragments of your line as well. Great new tool. Click on OK. And there it is. We just adjusted that little spacing right there. Really great tool. And you know this alone, for me, since I tend to do a lot of things that have type on them, this tool alone is worth the 12 bucks to get the Elements Plus, aside from everything else you can do with the program. Other great tools in here. Notice over here on the Elements Plus, we have little thumbnails here inside of the Effects section. This used to have only just nine thumbnails. It now has three more at the bottom. A new animation tool, which is really exciting, actually makes it much easier to do animation, a little, little animated GIF things. I'll be showing you that in a separate video a little later on here. But there you go, animation. It has a new tool here for doing camera raw corrections. This is really exciting. It's actually a better editor than the one that comes with Photoshop Elements. Now it's a little bit different. I kind of like the interface better on the Elements version but it's, this is more powerful. And then finally, the ability over here to set up custom tool presets. For the regular tools, if you come in and you're working with a standard tool over here that has some different options or settings, you can set your settings up down here and then save that as a preset very easily using this tool presets option right down there. Let's take a look at the Elements Plus site very quickly. I'll just bring that up. Here we go. Now here's the raw corrections. You can see this is available for version 11 and up. Also notice that the version for 2019 has now been posted. This wasn't up here about a week ago. It's now here. So you can go ahead and if you have 2019 of Photoshop Elements, you can go ahead and get the Elements Plus for that version right there. If you have a previous version, if you're working in say 15 and you already have Elements Plus, then you should have received an email by now with an update link for the new version 11 of Elements Plus. This is just the standard Elements Plus page right there, elementsplus.net. As always, of course, I'll have this link on the download page for this video. But right here, the little What's New button, click on that, and here's some new features in here, the frame animation and the edit selected text. Great update here on Elements 11. Okay, last thing I wanted to talk about, and that was about a replacement for the organizer, and that's right down here. I'm not going to bother launching the organizer here. It'll take a, you know, a minute or two to launch that. I'll just won't even bother with that. But the Elements Organizer is okay, but it has some problems. It has some issues. It's a little bit slow. It's a little bit confusing with the whole catalog library thing where it takes copies of images and puts it into its own catalog. So you have your images on your hard drive, plus you have the catalog for the organizer. It can get very confusing like that is not really how I like to work. The Adobe Bridge program, which comes with the Adobe Creative Cloud tools like Lightroom and Photoshop CC, the Bridge 
works in a different way. It looks at and organizes, helps you organize the files on your computer. It leaves all of your files in your normal folders and just allows you to easily see what's in there. But obviously, the Creative Cloud is a subscription-based set of programs, and you may not want to go that route, or you may just be kind of tired of Adobe, which is not too surprising. They make some great programs where the company's a little bit iffy. But there are other options. Now, I normally right now use the either my own organization on the hard drive, or if I need to be a little more specific on searching for things, I use the Adobe Bridge because I already have that, because I have the Creative Cloud suite of programs on my computer. But if you didn't have that, if you're working with Photoshop Elements, for instance, and you wanted something better than the Elements Organizer, there is a very good option. Let me just bring this one up over here. And this is the ACDC Photo Studio. Now, I just downloaded the 30-day trial for this so you can see this thing. Before I got the Adobe Bridge, I used to use this program several years ago. And it's a very powerful, full-featured organizational tool that allows you to do everything that you would expect from this kind of a tool. For instance, up here it shows your PSD files. These are your Photoshop or Photoshop Elements files. It shows those just fine. There's the JPEG for that one, and there is the Photoshop file. So it shows all your file formats. It gives you full control over here on the right-hand side with your metadata right in here. You can come in and tag this thing with categories. You can set up categories, keywords, put them into collections or smart collections. It has all that standard stuff. You can look at the file information over here on the right-hand side. So it gives you all this information, and it allows you to search for all those things, search for those different images by different settings. So full search feature. It gives you a lot more than that, though. It allows you to do such things as create slideshows. Now, this slideshow technique up here is much more like the old slideshow that was in Photoshop Elements 10 and earlier where you can set up your own choice of transitions between slides and the durations of those transitions and so forth. It gives you much more control over making real nice little slideshows, so it's good for that. You can set up external editors if you want to. I set mine up here for the Photoshop Elements 2019 editor, so I can go ahead and then take an image over into the 2019 editor. That is very easy to do. Just click on Configure Editors right down here and then find the program file and then link up to it like I have this Elements 2019 linked up right here. Easy to do. Even without that, though, this has its own built-in editor. It's right over here where it says Edit. Click on that. Let's bring that up here. And here we go. has a lot of editing tools. Left-hand side. Red eye reduction, repair tools, text, watermark, borders, crop resize, exposure and lighting controls, color controls on here, so white balance control. So there's a lot of tools already, so you can do a lot of basic photo editing right over here, right inside of the ACDC program. So it's a great replacement for the Elements Organizer. It has your folders over here. You can, you can set up a catalog if you want to. It just kind of speeds things up. But this looks at the images inside of your folder structure on your hard drive. It's not setting up its own catalog and putting images over there. It's looking at what's actually on your hard drive. I think it's a much better way to do this than the way that the Elements Organizer handles that. It's about 60 bucks right now. Again, I have a 30-day free trial I downloaded to show this to you. I would go ahead and do this if I wasn't using the Adobe Bridge that comes for free with the Creative Cloud programs. This is, you know, used to be my favorite before the Bridge showed up. I just kind of switched over to that one. If I didn't have Bridge, this is what I would be using for this kind of image organization. I'll be looking at this and doing a full review of this a little later on on YouTube. But for now, great program, and I highly recommend this if you're looking for something different. Again, it's a 30-day free trial. Just go ahead and give it a shot. I have the link for this also on the download page for this video, but it's ACDC in that ACD, and then the C is S-E-E, -E, right there, so A-C-D-C. And last but not least, of course, let's just get rid of this tracking thing here. And that is Happy Halloween, since Halloween is in just a couple of days here. So Happy Halloween. If you're going out trick-or-treating, be safe, be careful, watch out when you cross streets, but have a great time on Halloween. It's one of my favorite times of the year. As you can see, I always do cards for, the, for Halloween in here, so Happy Halloween. And I'll see you during the week with some other videos on YouTube and, of course, the weekly video blog in about a week from now. 
Don't forget to click on the like button and the share button as well. Make sure that you share with your friends. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn a lot more about programs like Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training courses and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.